Okay, so let's start with a formula. And I'm going to use unit four, day three. You can't see. Unit four, day three. And um, this will be the first part of hyperbola. So tomorrow we will come back and do converting from the big equation down to the formula format, like we did with the ellipse. Um, and we'll talk about puzzle problems with the hyperbola tomorrow. But I didn't want to have too much to take in today. Okay, so we'll spend another day on hyperbola tomorrow. Okay, let's start with our formula, which is, oops, let's start with x. So x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared, which is equal to 1. And again, if you're making a formula sheet for yourself, that would be a good one to put on there. So I'm going to highlight that one. Again, I'll let you use your notes and your worksheets, but if you want to make a little formula sheet so you can find these things quickly during the test, it might not be a bad idea. And this is one that I would include. Okay, so similar to the ellipse and the circle, we're still working with H and K. Similar to the ellipse, we're still working with A and B squared, and it's still equal to 1. The difference is that we have a minus sign in between. So that's what's going to make the difference between the ellipse and the hyperbola is the minus sign in between. Okay, but I'm still going to find my center point at HK. Now there's two ways to write this formula. One is like this, and the other one is with Y being first. Okay, so when you go and find HK, be careful. H is always with X. K is always with Y. So no matter which order they're in, get X from X and Y from Y and use the opposite sign. Okay, I'm going to also note that in this case, A is always first. Okay, so with our ellipse, A is always the bigger one, but with a hyperbola, A is always the first denominator. A is always the first denominator. Okay, with an ellipse, we have four vertices, but with a hyperbola, we're going to have two vertices. Okay, with an ellipse, we named four vertices. With a hyperbola, we're going to name two vertices. And here's how I'm going to find them. If X is first, I'm going to go right and left the value of A. If X is first, go right and left A. And they'll look a little bit like this. Okay, so you'll see me draw that picture on my paper just to remind my brain to go left and right. Okay, if Y is first, I'm going to do the opposite and I'm going to go up and down, also the value of A. Because remember, A is first. A is the first denominator. So if Y is first, I'm going to go up and down A. And they're going to look a little bit like this. Okay, so they look a little bit like the markings on a basketball court, or I think they look a little bit like people with their arms up and down, you know. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of what they look like. Okay. All right, I do still have foci on these, but my foci equation this time is going to be that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay, and let's highlight that formula too. Okay, notice that this sign is opposite from this sign. Okay, the same thing happens in an ellipse. In an ellipse, this is a plus, this is a minus. In a hyperbola, this is a minus, this is a plus. Okay, so notice that they're opposites of each other. Okay, um, I'm going to measure those along the axis, the same axis that I did my vertices. Okay, they will also be inside the hyperbola. 
So yesterday we talked about them being inside the ellipse. They will also be inside the hyperbola. Now when you first graph them, they're going to look like they're not because the hyperbola is going out. Okay, but they actually end up being inside your little hyperbola. Okay, they look a little bit like that. Okay, so that's a little bit what they look like. I'll show you more specifically on a graph in just a few minutes. Okay, you can still find eccentricity on a hyperbola. We just don't often ask you for it, but it's still C over A. So eccentricity does not change. But if you're working with a computer program that needs it, it's still C over A. Okay, the last thing we're going to ask you for on a hyperbola is the asymptote equation. Okay. We're going to write this equation in point-slope form. So think back to Algebra 1 when you talked about point-slope form. And that's how we're going to write it. And I would like for you to leave it in point-slope form. Okay, so don't do a lot of algebra on it. Just leave it the way that it is. Okay, to do that, I'm going to pull down y minus k from my original equation. Then I'm going to put my slope in. I'll tell you how to write that in just a second. And then I'm going to pull down x minus h. Okay. Now notice that an asymptote is a line. It's not a parabola. So this is a line, which means that I have no squares. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, it's a line, so there's no squares in your equation. Okay, and here's what I mean by that. When I go to grab these, this x or y minus k right here, when I go to pull that down, the tendency is to also write the square to go with it, but don't, because this is just a line equation. Okay, same thing over here. X minus H is just the X minus H. Do not bring down the square with it. Do you see what I mean? Okay. All right, the last thing we need to talk about is the slope. Let's actually define that. Okay. If X is first, then your slope is going to be plus and minus B over A. If y is first, then the slope is going to be plus and minus a over b. And I'll tell you why. Remember on these that a is always first. Okay, also think back to Algebra 1 when you talked about slope. And slope was your rise over your run. Okay? So the number on top is the number that you want to go up and down. That's the one under y. Okay, so if y is first, it's going to be a. If x is first, it's going to be b. And then the number on the bottom is the number you want to go left and right or what's underneath x. Okay, so it changes based on where x and y are. So when x and y switch, that slope formula switches as well. And I'll show you how to graph that in just a minute on the graph. Okay? All right, so let's jump right in and work an example, and I think it'll answer a lot of questions for you. All right. So let's take a look at x minus 4 squared over 25 minus y plus 3 squared over 16 is equal to 1. Okay, so let's take all of those rules and kind of put them to use. Okay, so I'm going to grab my graph paper, and I'm going to label my next little graph hyperbola number one. Okay, so I think we used the top three yesterday. So I'm going to use that very first one to be my hyperbola notes number one. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is find my center point. All right, so my center point... I get x from x, and I get y from y, and I use the opposite side. Okay, x from x, y from y, use the opposite side. Okay, so on my graph, 
I'm going to go and I'm going to graph my center point at 4, negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So graph your center point at 4, negative 3. Okay, so the center point's the same for the circle, the ellipse, and the hyperbola, which is kind of nice. You don't really have to remember a lot about that. Okay, next I'm going to look back at my equation. I noticed that x is first. So since x is first, I know my hyperbola are going to look a little bit like this. Okay, and again, I like to draw that little picture next to mine just to remind my brain that I'm going to be going left and right with this. Okay, I also know that A is first. So in an ellipse, A is bigger, but in a hyperbola, A is first. Okay, so I know then that A is 5 and B is 4. Okay, so to find my two vertices, I'm going to go left and right because x is first. I'm going to go left and right a, which is 5. So I'm going to go from my center point, left and right 5. Okay, so back over here on my graph, I'm going to go left and right 5 from my center point. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I'm going to go left and right 5 from my center point because x is first. Okay, now I'm going to name those two points, and it does not matter which order you name them in. Okay, so this one's going to be negative 1, negative 3. And this one's going to be 9, negative 3. Okay, so back over here on my list, I'm going to use negative 1, negative 3, and 9, negative 3. And again, you can name those in either order. Okay, any questions on the vertices? Okay, let's go work on the foci. I'm going to use my foci equation, which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I know that a squared is 25 and b squared is 16. Again, a is first. So I'm going to say that c is the square root of 41. Okay, so yesterday we got a little practice looking at what that's going to be between. So where's the square root of 41 going to be between? Six and seven. That's right, good. Okay, this one's going to be between 6 and 7. I know that because 41 is between 36 and 49. Okay, for the graph, that is good enough. You don't have to have an exact decimal point. Just between 6 and 7 is perfectly fine. Okay, I'm going to do that in the same direction as my vertices. The same direction as my vertices. And I'm going to do it from my center point. Okay, so from my center point, I'm going to go left. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a little bit more. And I'm going to go right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a little bit more. It runs a little bit off your graph on this one. That's okay. Okay, the closer your a squared and b squared numbers are together, the closer your vertices and your foci will be. So sometimes they look like they're almost the same point. That's okay. You'll see one here in just a minute. Okay, let's go and name those. So notice that I still have a y value of negative 3 on those two points. So what I did was I took my x value of 4 and I added the square root of 41. And I took my x value of 4 and I subtracted the square root of 41. Okay, so back over here when I name them. I'm going to take my center point of 4, I'm going to add and subtract the square root of 41, and I'm going to keep my y value of negative 3. Okay, so because I went left and right, I'm adding and subtracting to my x value and keeping my y value the same. Okay, questions on foci? Okay. Okay. All right, let's go write our asymptote equations. The last thing that we need to do 
is write our asymptote equation. Okay, I'm going to get y from here. Okay, don't bring the squared with it. Just bring the y plus 3. So y plus 3. I'm going to leave a little bit of space, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my x. So I get x from here. Don't bring the squared with it. I'm going to make that one just x minus 4. Leave a little bit of space right there. Okay, I left the space to fill in my slope. Okay, my slope on this one, because x is first, is going to be b over a. So I'm going to have plus or minus 4 over 5. Okay, b from here, a from here. And I'm going to plug that into my equation. Okay, so for my answer, that's all I need. Again, don't multiply through by the four-fifths, don't subtract over the three, just leave it the way that it is. Okay, I would actually prefer it in point-slope form because this gives me a point, which happens to also be my center point, and now I can just go and graph my slope. Okay, so here's how we're going to graph this. I'm going to do rise over run, rise over run, just like a normal slope. Okay, so from my center point, I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 5. Okay. And I'm going to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 5. Okay, and that's going to give me my positive slope. I'm going to connect those. I'm going to use my highlighter. To draw an asymptote, just like I did with my rationals, and just like my rationals, it's going to be a dashed line. So I'm going to connect these two points and my center point using a dashed line. It's a little bit like that. Can you see those points? Let me make my points a little bigger. Let me get a color to do with those. There's one, and there's one. Okay, so that's my positive four-fifths slope. Now I'm going to do my negative four-fifths slope. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, over five. Change my thing here. So one, two, three, four, over five. And I'm going to go down four, over five. And that gives me my negative four-fifths slope. And they should make like a little X. Okay. The other thing they're going to make, which you don't have to draw on here, but I want you to recognize, so just watch mine, is if I connected these, do you see how it makes a rectangle with my vertices? Okay. Again, you don't have to draw it on yours. But I just want you to see how those points just made a rectangle that include my vertices. So if you actually accidentally did your slope as 5 fourths, it would not do that. Okay, so it's a good way to check and make sure you have your slope in the right order, that it should make a box with your vertices. Okay. All right, the last thing I need to do is draw my hyperbola. So I'm going to go from my vertices out towards my asymptotes. And same thing here, and this way, and this way. Questions on that one. We're going to do an up and down one too, so I'll let you see an up and down here in a second. Any questions on that one before I go there then? This is a lot to take in. These have a lot of different little steps and pieces. Um, so do the ellipses. So be sure you get some good practice with these. That's the best way to get good at these is just to practice. Good. Okay, all right. Draw on your next graph. Let's say that we're going to do hyperbola number two, and we'll just do one more of these today. I think that's going to be enough for your brain to take in for one day is just to draw two of these. 
Again, as you practice too, you'll get faster at drawing them so they won't take you 20 minutes to draw one like it does me. <laughs> okay. okay, last one for today. Get one that's pretty. All right, let's do y minus 2 squared over 9 minus x minus 1 squared over 4 is equal to 1. Oh, you can't see. Let's make it where you can see it. There we go. <laughs> Very helpful when you can actually see the problem we're working. Okay. Again, I know it's a hyperbola because of the minus sign in between them. That's how I know that it's a hyperbola. It's also always going to be equal to 1. Always equal to 1. Okay, let me start by finding my center point. Be careful on this one because the center point, x needs to come from x, but x is second this time. So watch out from that. x comes from x, opposite sign. y comes from y, opposite sign. Okay, so my center point is going to be 1, 2. So they actually kind of switch places. So watch out for that. Okay, let's go ahead and graph that. So on your graph, let's graph 1, 2. Okay, now I'm going to look at my equation. I notice that y is first this time, so with y being first, I know that my graph's going to look something kind of like this. Okay, again, it's just a little sketch that I draw to remind my brain that we're going up and down this time. Okay, a is always first, so this time a squared is 9, a is 3, and b squared is 4, so b is 2. Okay, those numbers are pretty close together, so my foci and my vertices are going to be close together as well. Just so you know. Okay, so to draw my vertices, I'm going to go up and down because y is first, and I'm going to go up and down 3. So I'm going to go up and down because y is first, and I'm going to go in a value. So I'm going to go up and down 3. All right, so back over to here. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3. Okay, next I'm going to name those points. It does not matter which order you name them in. Okay, but this one's going to be at 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1, and then my other one's going to be at 1, 5. You can list them in either order. Okay, any questions on my vertices? Okay, let's go find my foci. So for my foci for a hyperbola, I'm going to use that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. In this case, c squared is 9 plus 4, so c is going to be the square root of 13. Okay, which two numbers am I going to find 13 between? Or the square root of 13? That's right, good. Yeah, good, between 3 and 4, good. Okay, this is between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, so that's going to be between 3 and 4. So again, for my graph, that's a good enough approximation. I'm just going to go and I'm going to draw a point three and between 3 and 4. Okay, this time because y is first, I'm going to do that also up and down. So go in the same direction that you went for your vertices. Okay, so I'm going to go from my center point up 3 and a little bit more. And down 3 and a little bit more. Okay. And again, because my a squared and b squared were similar, my vertices and my foci are going to be kind of right next to each other. They're just almost on top of each other on this one. Sometimes that happens. 
Okay, this time that went up and down, so I'm going to add and subtract to my y value. Okay, so keep x the same and add and subtract with your y value. So I'm going to keep x the same from my center, and then I'm going to take the 2 and add and subtract the square root of 13. Okay, so if you look at your graph, we're still at an x value of 1, and then I took the 2 and went up and down from there. Okay, any questions on the FOSA? Okay, last piece. Let's find the asymptotes. I'm going to take y from my equation up here. Do not bring the square. So I'm going to have y minus 2. Let's leave a little bit of space. And I'm going to get x from up here as well. But don't bring the square. So I'm going to take that x minus 1. Okay, with y being first, my slope equation is going to be a over b. So in this case, that's going to be 3 over 2. So that's what will go right here in the little space that we left. Okay, because y is first, this time I'm going to use a over b. Okay, I already have my point on there, so now I just need to graph my slope. So I'm going to go up and down 3, left and right 2, in all directions. Alright, so I'm going to start by going up 3, over 2, this way. And I'm going to go down 3, over 2, this way. Connect your dots. Oh, turned my pink highlighter blue. <laughs> By drawing over my pen, it turned my pink highlighter a different color. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to go the other direction. So down three over two, and up three over two. And connect the dots. Maybe this is why they told you to do connect the dot when you were a kid. I don't know. They saw asymptotes coming in your lives. <laughs> okay, again, it should make a box with your vertices. So check and make sure that your vertices ended up on that same box, the same rectangle. Okay, again, you don't have to draw the rectangle, but if they don't end up that way, your slope may be upside down. So watch out for that. Right, and now I'm going to go from my vertex towards my asymptote. And same thing down here. 